Hi, my name is Rich, and today we're going to talk about the LG front load washing machines. And this is the bearing replacement for the uh, tub bearings. There's lots of videos that tell you how to disassemble and remove this tub from the washing machine, so I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to go into the tub removal. I've watched a lot of videos, and people fight this all the time. So I found that the best thing to do when you're doing this is to just good preparation and you might spend a little bit of time making a couple of tools for yourself, but in the long run they will pay off. So one of the things that I've noticed is a lot of times they leave this stator assembly all on the tub, which we have removed it from this tub already now. So just make sure you remove anything that's going to be within the working area of these bearings. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is support for this tub and we want to make a support box. If we make a support box for this tub, then what happens is you have something that holds this thing in the correct position and let gravity do its natural job and help assist you with removing this tub from its case. So you can then remove the bearings from the case. So let me, uh, I'm going to grab my tape measure real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, now that I have my tape measure, first thing we want to do is measure the tub just to double check the size that we need. So we're just going to set this on the side here. We want to take and get a measurement of the diameter of the tub. This tub measures about 22 and a quarter inches. So we want to make a box that is going to be half inch to three quarter of an inch larger than the diameter of this tub. So that's what we'll do. Is then what we'll do is we're going to take and we're going to make it a box. It's a simple box. The only thing that criteria is the idea of the box has to be a half an inch bigger than the OD of this tub. And then we want to make sure we have the proper height. This is about 11 and a half inches tall. And that will allow it to sit on the box. And we lay the box down. We can lay our box down. And then we'll take our tub assembly. And we're going to set it in our box. Like so. We just want to make sure that it's supported in the box. And it's resting on four good points. You can rotate it around, and if you don't like the way you're supported, you can rotate it for better support. Um, kind of like that right there. Has a good support edge there, a good flat edge over here. So it looks like we're supported all the way around on this box now. So the next thing you want to do is the bolt that you use to remove the stator flywheel, you're gonna put back in. You're gonna put this bolt back. A lot of people, what they do is they try to hammer on this shaft. You don't have to hammer on the shaft. You put the bolt back in, and what happens is, I have my little impact, my little Makita impact that I use, and I'm gonna run this bolt back in. tighten it up a little bit. What that does is that actually stretches that shaft and distorts that metal just enough so that when you go to tap on it, it's going to fall right out. Some may take a little more tapping than others, but have yourself a good hammer. This is important because if you don't have a good hammer, one that has enough weight to it, you're going to sit there and be beating against and it's not, it's just not worth the effort. Get yourself a good hammer. I'm going to stop and pick up my I have hammers. my hammers now. Um, what I suggest is you can use anywhere from a four pound to an eight pound sledge hammer. And that should do the trick. Um, if you have to hit much harder than that, you got some serious problems. But this should do the trick for you. You have two ways you can actually do this. The first way is you can actually just take and hit right on that bolt because you're not going to distort that shaft. You're just hitting on the head of the bolt. It is not going to ruin anything. If you ruin the bolt, the worst thing could happen is you have to get a new bolt. But it's not going to ruin that bolt. The next thing you can do is you can back it up. You can use a hammer to back it up, and you can hit on the hammer. 
So in this particular case, what I'll do is I'll use that, this reason this way now. I'm gonna back it up and I'm gonna hit with this hammer here. That's how hard it took to get that shaft to drop out of there. That shaft dropped out of there. The bolt and washer being on there kept it from falling all the way to the ground. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and loosen that bolt and we'll remove the whole pad. The shaft is all the way out now. That's all it takes to drop that tub out of this housing. Some of your shafts are going to be more damaged, bearing are going to be more damaged than others. However, most cases, this is the way it should come out. If you try to remove these things horizontally, all they're going to do is work against you. If you work on it, let gravity do its job, it's going to be, it's going to help you remove these tubs. Okay, I'm going to pick, now that I've got that bolt out and that dropped out of here, I'm just going to pick this up off of here, and there's the tub. As you see, there's your shaft. There's your inner bearing here. Notice we have damage on the inner bearing and that seal. Doesn't look really good, so we know we have to replace that. Now these bearings, these bearings when installed are against opposing shoulders. So the front top bearing goes against the shoulder one way and the bottom bearing, the inner bearing goes against the shoulder another way. So the bigger bearing is on the inside. Um, it has a larger hole in it. So I would drive the smaller bearing out first, which is the top bearing, and then the inner bearing we will get afterwards. So this is where we're at now. We'll go ahead and get us a tool and I'll make us a tool to drive up that bearing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make up a tool so I can drive that bearing out. I put the case up on two little two by fours to support it so we have some place to drive the bearing out to. But to make the tool I'm just simply using some half inch drive extensions. This is a 21 millimeter socket that was purchased from Harbor Freight, not an expensive socket. Uh, this is a 21 millimeter. Uh, would fit down through the bore of the one bearing to get to the other bearing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a smaller socket and I'm going to use it as a guide for the big socket. So the big socket's going to go on the end of the extension. And then we're going to take this tape and we're going to build up this end so it fits up inside of this socket. So electrician's tape is your friend for doing a lot of this kind of stuff. And you just take and wrap it, and we'll wrap it up about 10 times. You can always add more to it, or you can always take away from it. So you can do either or. If it doesn't fit, right now it seems like it's a little snug. I think I'll take a little bit off of it. I want it to be snug in there, but I don't want it to be too snug. So I'll take a little bit off. Well, that might have been too much. That was too much. I gotta add back to it. I'll add a little bit back onto it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it up inside this socket. I'll kind of give it a little twist. We'll kind of push it up in there a little bit. So that'll act as a guide for our when we go down into it. And that's how we make up that tool. And then um, what we do is I'm just going to push it down through here. And then I'm going to put it down in that lower one. Now I'm, now I'm centered in the bearing. So when I go to drive it, I'm hitting the bearing from the center. What I did is I have these 2 by 4 box for support underneath it and make sure they're in the right spot. Make sure you're, you make sure you have good support there. And then we're going to take like that. And the bearing can, is out. Lost my deal there. We pull off the bearing and here's our bearing. 
So it wasn't a lot of work to get it out. You just have to have the right tools to get it out. The right size hammer and the right support blocks is what allows this bearing to come out. Now we can go after the hard bearing, which is on the inside. But at least now we have some room to work and we didn't damage anything. Let's see, look down the hole, you see the other bearing down in there. Now we have to find a tool that we can use to drive that bearing out with. So now what I did is I took and I put the case up on our wooden box that we made just so that I could get it up a little bit so I don't have to work off the ground so much. And then I went ahead and I looked up for a couple more sockets that we're going to be able to use to drive out this inner bearing. So I have an inch and an eighth socket here. The diameter of it is just right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it. I got a half inch drive extension. And that other socket, the 21 millimeter we use to go down through that other bearing, we're going to use that uh, as our guide for this one. And I'm going to do the same thing with my tape again. This one almost fits right in there. So we don't have to wrap very much on it. I'm just going to put one little wrap around it. Just put one little wrap around it, like so. That's all I'm going to do with that. And then I'm going to put it inside my socket. I'm going to kind of twist it on down in there. Push it down in that socket. Now what we have is a nice guide for our, for our drive, for our drift. We have our extension. We'll put it down in here, just like that. Now we're ready to drive out that inner bearing. So we're going to take and we'll just drive that inner bearing out. I left the seal in there. I'm going to drive the seal out with the bearing at the same time. So let's try it and see if it works. And that's how you get those bearings out. You can fight them a lot, or you can let gravity and the right little simple tools that you have in your, in your mechanics boxes do the work for you. Did you damage anything? That's our bearing, our seal, and our sockets. And uh, we didn't damage anything. Everything is in good shape. We don't have to worry about repairing anything because we didn't really damage anything. We're just going to have to clean everything up. We had a good support for our base. So everything was supported nice. Nothing had to get beat up. We didn't fight it trying to get it out of there. That second bearing took a little more force to hit it out, but you have to hold that and you have to hit it and it will come out.